So this is a really tough question that relates to the idea of ABC factoring. So before we get into this question, let's make sure that you're sharp on that method. So let's say that we have 2x squared minus x minus 10 equals 0. So now we have coefficients in the a, b, and c locations. So here we would need two numbers that add to b, which is negative 1, and multiply to AC, which is 2 times negative 10, negative 20. So what two numbers add to negative 1 and multiply to negative 20? And the answer is negative 5 and 4. So next, we split the middle term into those two terms. So we'll have 2x squared minus 5x plus 4x minus 10. And the next thing you do in this method is you do factor by grouping. So you take the first two and get a common factor out of there, x, 2x minus 5, and then another common factor from the next two, plus 2, 2x minus 5. And now we have two terms that both have a factor of 2x minus 5. So we'll take out the 2x minus 5, and it leaves us with x plus 2. Now we can use our zero product rule and say this equals zero and this equals zero. And we'll get our two actual answers, five over two and negative two. So that's a method you need to be good at if you want a top score on the SAT. Let's find out how it applies in this crazy situation here. So here in this situation, one of the two factors is x plus two b. The other factor has to start with a 3, because notice that all the answer choices, if we were to FOIL them out, they would FOIL out to 3x squared. So you have to have a 3x right here, because if we were FOILing those two, well, we don't really know what number goes in this spot yet, but just imagine if we were FOILing right now, first times first would give you the 3x squared. So that's the first part of our setup, is knowing that you have to have a 3x right there. Now, the other thing to notice is that all the answer choices have 14b in this last spot. So there's really only one number that can go in this space here, and that's the number 7. Because when you do the L of foiling these two out, now you'll get 14b. So just imagine we're foiling this out. Now we'll have first times first, 3x squared. Outer, outer, that's going to be 3x times 2b. So 6bx, inner times inner, 7 times x, and last times last, which is 14b. Now, a next kind of logical thing we can do from here is realize that if these two have x to them, then we can factor that out, and it'll leave us with 6b plus 7 in front of the x for the middle term. So you've got 3x squared plus 6b plus 7x plus 14b. Now here's the thing, b has to come out as an integer number. And this is our b right here. b is the thing in front of the x. So whatever 6b plus 7 is really equal to, that's what b is equal to. So which of these four things can be equal to b, which is 6b plus 7? So we can go off to the side and we can say, well, is 7 equal to that? Is 28 equal to that? And so on. 42 and 49. Now remember, for it to work out, B would have to work out as an integer. And the one that ends up working is this one. Because if we subtract 7 from both sides, we'll have 42 equals 6B. And if we divide both sides by 6, we'll have B equals 7. So we just got b to work out as an integer when we were using the 49 that came from answer choice d to this question.